Welcome back to the Whatnots Review Show number 280. My name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined by Melissa Wilkinson. Melissa, how's your weekend been? It's good. I've got vacation time to burn here at the end of the year. So Ooh. I took yesterday off and just went and got a facial. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. That's relaxing. That's kind of what I'm doing, minus the facial uh, this next week week it's obviously the thanksgiving coming up so we had some of the week off uh and then we have that like half day on wednesday and i was like i'm just gonna take that off because it's a half day you, you know who cares but it's also my birthday weekend this yeah. weekend happy and birthday tomorrow thank you. thank you uh but yeah because my birthday fell on a sunday i couldn't take off of work on that day. So I was like, well, I'll take Monday off. And then I was like, well, then I'm only there next week on Tuesday. Who wants to be only there on a Tuesday? So I was like, I'll just t take the whole week off. Oh, nice. Yeah. So good. I got some 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 little vacation time uh, this next week. So it's good. It's good. And I know uh, on one of our uh, other podcasts, I told you I was about to go see uh, the next goal wins. Yeah, uh, this weekend we're actually changing our plans. We found a showing of the the holdovers, uh, so yes. we're going to go see that. Tonight. Yay! So, oh, holdovers is remarkable. Same movie, almost. You saw it last week. I'm seeing I, it. I've already seen both of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> It's 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 fun. It's ex <laughs> exciting. Um, but yeah, good stuff. Indeed. Uh, I, I guess real quick before we get started. Also, ha happy Thanksgiving uh, to everyone out there who celebrates it. Uh, we hope you happy have happy parade uh, day. Yeah, we hope you have some good, tasty food. Watch some good football or something. Did you know? That the Good Burger Burger car is going to be in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade this year. Is it really? Yes. Incredible. Why would I lie? That's awesome. <laughs> Melissa, you could you, you could just be, you know what, from here on out, sinister Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> I lie about very mundane things. Yeah. <laughs> just playground, my uncle works at Nintendo type lies. Right, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, he really did work at Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff uh melissa this week here on the show i i have to say this is like the culmination of the review show everything we've been building towards <laughs> this week on the podcast we are talking about the velocipaster uh, if you guys did not know, each and every week here on the show, we have a different story to talk about. It could be a movie, a TV show, anime, manga, comic book, all sorts of stuff. We read it, we watch it, we come back here and talk about it. Uh, yeah, this week, the Velocipaster. I, I've been mentioning this movie to you for what feels like two years now since I watched Probably. it originally um yeah and just kept being like man this movie's so good i love it it was hilarious it was better than i expected like all of the, all of this stuff and you're just just kind of politely nodding your head being like okay guys no I, I, <laughs> no I believe you i <laughs> she's I lying about that too <laughs> no i once you told me about the velocipaster i'm like that does yeah. sound like a real rowdy good time I'll have to watch that sometime. And I hadn't until you brought it to me this week. Yes. Yeah. Um, my idea, uh, I, I got the idea a couple months ago to pitch on my birthday weekend, three like B movies uh, ish or, or like ones that could be considered B movies because they were really bad. Um, mm -hmm. and so I, I pitched this and Tammy and the T-Rex, uh, and Adventures in Dinosaur City, <laughs> but we just kind of had to do the Velocipaster because I had talked about it so much. Uh, so thank you for picking that one. Cause this truly is one of my favorites. I love this movie. Um, it is. Yeah, it's it is absolutely a blast. It's a good time. Go check it out. Um, I know it's on Peacock uh, is where you can Tubi. watch it. Yeah, also on Tubi. 
Uh, I believe they have a Blu-ray out that you can get. Cool. You can purchase. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's good, good fun stuff. Uh, but Melissa, what did you think? Because I'm I'm excited to hear your <laughs> thoughts of of this. You had seen bits and pieces of Tammy and the T Rex, or you had seen like clips. Yeah. But you knew nothing yeah. about the Velocipaster. No, you you told me about it, but I had never seen a frame of it. And I had trouble imagining how this thing is brought to life on screen. Mm -hmm. I, so had, a gr I had a great time. It's a movie that is purposefully a absurd, low quality B movie. Mm -hmm. But watching it, I feel like the cast and crew do know what they're doing. Like, I don't think this is oh, a absolutely. good movie, but I feel like in another context, these people could make a good movie. And instead, they chose to gift us with the Velocipaster. Absolutely. I was talking uh, to the guy that works at my comic book store about this, and we were talking about how there there are there's there's like a a group of people nowadays that are really taking this like b movie this like poor like bad low b -b budget m -m -m seriously in a way that's not the right word exactly but they 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 know the genre space that they're working mm. in they are using that style that that budget that type of e editing to to make actual like fun movies in that space and not have it be like, oh, yeah, we were in the, you know, 1940s and we had a b b budget of five thousand dollars and we just happened to make a really bad movie, uh -huh. even though we thought we were making something really good. Right. Um, they, like they they know the space that they're operating in um, and, and it works. It works so well. <laughs> It's it's so fun because it's so dumb. It's so stupid. And I love it. <laughs> and it it never overstays its welcome. It's only like an hour yeah. and 15, an hour and 20 ish. Real um, snappy. Yeah. So it 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 hooks you right from the, the start and moves along uh and and gets out. And uh it, it it's it's a good fun time. Indeed. It's a good fun time. And they are working on a sequel apparently oh, cool. uh this past month is when they wrapped up production for uh for hey. the thing in in october 2023 is when they wrapped production uh so no word yet on a release date but i want to see happening. it in theaters right yeah <laughs> I, I would go to that imax screening Alamo draft house uh, velocipaster <laughs> 2 catch me front and center <laughs> <laughs> I would like to read from a letterboxed review that I found that yes, I feel please. like uh, pretty aptly summarizes this movie. This is from Drew Edelstein. Father Jones, the discount combination of Benedict Cumberbatch and John Mulaney is a priest who loses his parents in a tragic, incredibly elaborate car accident. Mm hmm. Grieving, he embarks on a journey to China, happening upon a mystical artifact that causes him to turn into a velociraptor. Taken in by a prostitute, or rather a hooker doctor lawyer, he <laughs> yep. attempts to balance his faith with his newfound prehistoric powers. And this is only in the first 20 minutes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's, that is the like plot synopsis of what's ha happening uh, in, in this. Yeah, he gets these velociraptor powers um and then starts taking out bad guys um yeah it's uh it it is a blast it is ridiculous um the yeah the incredibly elaborate car accident <laughs> scene car explosion is great um yeah there's uh it, it's like a, a, again they know the space that they're working in they don't mm -hmm. have the effects to do all these fancy explosions and green screen yeah. things and so, so instead, they, will they do... really hang a lampshade on it they yeah. obviously point out the lack of special effects yeah and it makes for a hilarious time um i highly recommend going to check it out it's it's a blast everyone will be laughing um so yeah, 
good good stuff with that do you have anything else that you want to add <laughs> onto our like general thoughts before we get into spoilers and stuff no this i feel like we've told the audience enough go yeah. to your free to be click on it like i said you get 20 minutes in and you've had quite a taste of the velocipaster absolutely you'll be hooked indeed um cool yeah well let's take a quick break for housekeeping uh and then when we come back we will dive into spoilers a little bit for the velocipaster we'll be right back here at The Whatnots, we make multiple different shows, and a lot of hard work goes into making them, so we would love it if you check them all out. If you enjoy our shows, patreon.com slash the whatnots is the best place to show your support. For just a dollar a month, you can get early access to episodes, and at our $3 tier, a Patreon-exclusive podcast, The Pilots Club. You can even get a shout out and thank you on most of our shows at the $5 tier. And if you're one of our patrons already, Thank you so much. It means the world to us. You can find out more information on our website, thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in The Whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. You can also find us on YouTube and Twitch for video versions of the shows, trailer reactions, and live streams. And lastly, we have merch. If you want to grab yourself a shirt or a hoodie or a mug or something else, head over to the whatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. All right, we are back. Once again, a big shout out to our Patreon supporters. We love you a lot. Thank you. Uh, it means a ton. Over on the Pilots Club this month, uh, we got to talk about the first episode of Manifest. Uh, a TV show about a plane that takes off from Jamaica and is he headed to New York only to find that when they land, they discover that they are now missing five and a half years of time. The world has moved on without them. And there's a big mystery of what happened to that plane while it was up in the air, because to them, it was just it was a normal plane. The, right. I, who, who knows? Um, so we got to discuss that a bit and that was a good fun time uh but for next month for december we'll give you a little sneak peek about uh what we will be talking about then uh gendy tartakovsky has a new cartoon out called unicorn warriors eternal uh and we are going to be discussing the first episode of that if you are an animation nerd, this is one that you will want to check out. There's a lot of like early manga influence, early uh, American cartooning from Disney to everything you see on Cartoon Network. Uh, it's just a, a wild mix of styles in that one. So there you go. Uh, right here on the review show this past week, we got to talk about the crime the neo crime noir mystery extravaganza that is under the silver lake uh mm -hmm. an a24 film starring andrew garfield uh as he goes down the rabbit hole searching for um a neighbor of his that he's kind of fallen in lo 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 love with and she's disappeared um if you like solving mysteries and puzzles uh if you like trying to find all the rabbit holes and the the easter eggs and the hidden meanings behind everything this is a film for you there's so much to explore uh there's some things that blew my mind of like there was a hidden meaning in that oh my god what <laughs> uh so yeah yeah go go check that one out um over on the captain's log this past week, we got to talk about some of the shows and things that we've been catching up on. Melissa, you finally watched uh, the rest of Hannibal, uh, which we covered here on the re review show years ago. Um, so you did that. I caught up on Our Flag Means Death, season two, stuff like that. Uh, and then we got to react to the Madam Web trailer and What If season two trailer so go check all of that stuff out over there besides those trailer reactions over on the reactor core we also have our reactions to the loki season two finale and the marvels uh so go go check all of that stuff out but i think that is about it for 
housekeeping stuff. So without further ado, let's get back to the Velocipaster. Okay, we are officially in spoiler territory. <laughs> now, Melissa, I, I know I had described this as like, it's a B movie, it's a low budget movie, but like you said, you had trouble picturing what, like how, how B movie is this B movie, right? So what, like, going into it what what were you expecting what like when did it click for you of like oh okay this is what we're in for here i'd heard it was kind of inspired by bird demic i've seen that mm. i was picturing that okay. in my mind and i know let me describe this opening scene which is what you described to me like two years ago yeah where our main character, Father Doug Jones, very, which I thought it was very funny that is the same name as like the guy who played Abe Sapien, <laughs> classic <laughs> character actor Doug Jones. He, you see him doing a sermon, then he walks out of the church, and across the street are his parents standing next to their car talking to each other. They he does not approach his him. parents. Instead, he just stands there on the steps of the church and waves. Hi, mom. Hi, dad. And they wave back at him. And then you see him react with shock and it cuts to the reverse shot, which the parents and the car are now gone. It's just a shot of the empty street and laid over the screen is the text VFX car on fire. <laughs> Explosion car on fire. Yeah. And, and then it cuts back back to him and he's just like no no <laughs> <laughs> which made me think of like some jokey like high school goof off like if you have to make a short film for like a class project and you make it as dumb as possible because you have no resources you just have windows movie maker and you yep. put as much silly text in there as you can Absolutely. Which is apparently how this project got started. Uh, he I so I don't know who or what he was t t t t t texting them, but apparently he got the idea because his phone auto corrected uh, the word Velociraptor into Velosa pa Pastor. Uh, and so then he he got the idea from that way. So I I, I should mention I say he I, I don't I don't think we've mentioned uh, this is a 2017 American comedy horror film written and directed and edited by Brendan Steer. Um, so 2019 I think. Uh, to, so that's when it had the wider release in the United okay. States. Uh, but they made it in 2017. It was. Uh, according to the Wikipedia page, after screening at the B movie underground and trash, the butt film festival uh, on August 31st, 2018, the film received a wide release in the United States uh, in August 13th, 2019 by Wild Eye releasing. Um, yeah, so it, it's. Uh, <laughs> It, it it started as this like college project when when he when he was in school uh, and I, like he made he made the sh the short film, which is out on YouTube. You guys can go watch it. Um, and I I've done this exact same project basically when I was in art school, art school, school, we had to like come up with an idea for a movie and then like film the trailer for the movie and do all of that, that stuff. Uh, the one that I did was uh, a hide and seek game, game of hide and seek. Cause what was that? Wasn't there some movie that was like tag? It, it was, it was a bunch of guys playing tag yes. all over. It was something like that. So I was like, what if we just did another child like game? What if we did hide and seek? And so it was this like citywide game of hide and seek, but we all took it like as seriously <laughs> as like the next, bu 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 the next uh, like mission impossible action. Movie. <laughs> um, yeah. And so uh, thus the Velocipastor was born. 
so you're, you're yeah you're you're spot on it it feels like this like college project come to, to life here um so and it it, it worked it's fantastic <laughs> um yeah so like that i i think that that opening shot that opening kind of joke about the car exploding i think is what really hooked me that is one of my favorite parts of the whole movie it is just instantly like this is what you're in for here we we, we know what we're working with uh it is it, it like <laughs> it's not like we're trying to have a car like that there's like a green screen of a car on fire right. or they bought something on we don't, a website we don't even that, cut to footage of like a hot wheel that they lit on fire that they're trying to treat like it's a miniature they're like what is the least we can do the funniest part of it to me is that every piece of on-screen text is in this almost old west looking serif font it's such a specific choice yeah um it's almost like the it's not exactly the like marker felt tip style yeah. but it has the like a r- little more rounded serifs um e- even still yeah it's it's funny how they can go from that like vfx car on fire to then after like his p- <laughs> parents have da- 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 died he tries to like go find himself or go find god in this situation so he g- goes to china and they have the like big bold on screen china in this like yellow serif <laughs> font and he's just out in the woods somewhere well, I, I in love- philadelphia or, or something right. in pennsylvania every single Every single exterior in this movie is in the same park that looks like zero of the places it's supposed to be. It's but great. You s- <laughs> it cuts to him walking around in the woods. The text on screen says China. And then the text disappears and you see Doug just looking around, taken in the air. And he says, ah, China. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's so good. Like, I... I, I, I love how they do the stuff like that. Oh, yes. You have something else? <laughs> One more thing. So after so the movie starts, his parents die. He talks to uh, his superior, his mentor, Father Stewart and Father Stewart's like travel. Find yourself. Then there's the title sequence is op- over this montage of him driving set to this hard rock music. Then it cuts to him wandering around the woods in China telling me that he drove to china is, is that the joke here he drove there drove all he's that much of a badass he drove all the way to but, china but one of the more subtle details of making this purposefully into a bad movie is that after it cuts from the driving montage to him walking around these supposedly chinese woods is that the hard rock driving music continues for like another minute and then it fades out and turns into tranquil music. Like just the <laughs> yeah. incorrect cut of the music was very funny to me. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and this is then like almost immediately is when they introduce ninjas into the movie. <laughs> <laughs> that you, you can't have a, 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 a bad B Mayovi without some mention of ninjas at the very it's least. It's like the, easiest cheapest costume you can get for a bad guy absolutely when when i was a, a young kid with my friends in our backyards out in the woods making movies this is what we'd do we'd fight ninjas we'd film it it'd be like the the jedi versus ninjas right we'd have those like little fake lightsabers we'd have ninja stars and stuff that we could toss around and we just make stupid movies like that and this is exactly it and i think that that's partly why at least this connects with me is like i i did this stuff like this is me i understand doug jones in here i am i am doug jones we are all doug jones um god we made so many stupid home movies back in the day it was great um but yeah there's this 
Chinese princess, this Chinese woman. I don't know. We, we the, never the, figure no out backstory. who she is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, there there is a little bit. Once we do see the ninjas, once they've come to Pennsylvania or wherever they are, I think it was f- filmed in Pennsylvania is I think what I saw. Um, I c- could be wrong with that. But whenever they come to w- where Doug Jones lives, um, they 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 do mention this thing about some kind of like dragon warriors and i don't i'm i'm not familiar enough with like chinese mythology mm. to to know if it is are they pulling on some <laughs> some myth some story uh or are they just maybe making it up like oh it's chinese so dragons like let's let's put yeah. that in and ninjas right and um it- Dragon almost velociraptor. The movie right, never yeah. talks about that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I mean, dinosaurs could be mistaken for dragons or vice versa. So mm-hmm. I, you know, that's believable t- to an extent. Um, I, I mean, that's kind of what, what the, the history has also said about even like the the European stories of of mm-hmm. dragons and stuff. Of like these were maybe like tales passed down from generations of them, like fighting the alligators, like bigger alligators or lizards or, so, you know, some kind of dinosaurs like creature uh, rather than an actual like smog dragon uh, mm-hmm. sitting on a big old pile of gold there. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it like, there is that stuff, but yeah, we don't know it like is is she someone who used to be in that organization and wanted out? Is she royalty somehow? Is she an important political figure? Is she Did she once carry the Velociraptor powers? We right? don't know. Yeah. Is she the the Stegosaurus something? Uh who knows? But uh, yeah, she gets uh, hit with an arrow and d- d- dies right in front of Doug J- Jones, but not before passing on this ancient artifact, which transforms him uh, into said Velocipastor. Um, and enter uh, Carol. This is where uh, he he makes it back home. He is like wandering around in the woods as he's transforming uh carol happens to be uh doing some shady business out in the woods there and uh the the the, the, the doug has fully transformed into a velociraptor at this point Mm. and killed uh this guy that is harassing her uh Mm. and she brings him back to her apartment uh very nice carol (laughs) <laughs> right yeah very caring um and she she as as he like wakes up that next morning not knowing what happened she comes in and is like last night was amazing <laughs> <laughs> and he's just so con- confused of like who are you where am i what's happening why am i naked like wh- mm. what is going on uh and yeah it's it's great that they just continue on with like the the misunderstanding joke oh no 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 we 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 didn't actually have sex uh but you 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 turned into a velociraptor what did you think i was talking about that was amazing (laughs) i've never had an experience like that before in my life (laughs) exactly um yeah what did you think about uh carol's character here I liked her. She's very kind, very competent. I like that we were introduced to her as this. uh, First off, you see her wearing this like animal print, like short sort of waist length faux fur coat, Mm -hmm. which has somehow become movie language for this is a prostitute. And I'm very curious what the history of that trope is, because as soon as I see it, that's what I thought it was. Then. Yes, she is a sex worker. She's the sort of hooker with a heart of gold trope. But then yeah. I like finding out that she's also uh, in pre-med and pre-law school. And <laughs> she just does time. this to earn some money. 
Yeah, good for her. I like her, that she's got honestly. aspirations. She's yeah. yeah, she's got a whole life. <laughs> good for Carol. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, she's she's an interesting character because she both is the tr- the trope, but then mm. in the extension of that, which makes it new and ridiculous. Right. It, mm. it is not like I'm paying my way through law school, 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 and that's it. It's law school and med school at the same right. time. <laughs> she needs that money. He's a genius. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I no, I'm 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 wondering if that trope, though, does have something to, to do with like for the equals luxury in some people's eyes like it was expensive and so if you can like, have that like animal skin animal maybe. fur kind of thing but also have it be like a real short tight skirt right like i don't know i don't know if there's one movie know. back in like the 70s that put a in the parlance of the time a street walker in that coat and everybody just kept parroting that one movie and now that's entered our our modern lexicon not in like a very obvious way i don't think i've ever heard anybody reference this but that's what i think whenever i see that coat yeah i feel like this movie was also using that very purposefully Uh, i don't know study of sex workers fashion in in cinema in in, interesting yeah Um, you've also got the the biblical illusion there with mary magdalene sure being yeah. a prostitute i don't know i saw the da vinci code once so that's all <laughs> that's all my it. knowledge about this <laughs> I, I learned everything i know about religion from the da vinci code i, I saw jesus christ superstar once <laughs> um yeah, it, it, I, I I like her character a lot because he even in when you see her um, in in her like sex worker job, uh, when she she meets all time g- g- great Frankie Mermaid. Um, <laughs> and you, you know why they call him Frankie Mermaid, right? Because <laughs> he's swimming in bitches. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, d- terrible. I l- 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 love it. Um, but even then, like she is like she she feels competent I- I- enough to like she could almost be running his his scheme like 10 times better than mm-hmm. him. She feels ju- not ex- exasperated. It's not the right word, but she feels just like I have to put up with him. But mm-hmm. also I am so much smarter than this idiot yeah at the same time and uh, yeah i i would uh, part of me almost wants to see her like now that he's dead and out of the way like what could she do in that space like how 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 could she run that same operation but in a much Mm. better safer way that had a better outlook on sex workers and said not that this movie has a bad outlook on sex workers i don't think it's commenting on that at all but but (laughs) (laughs) but, (laughs) um, she offers multiple services you pay by the hour both for sexual activities and legal advice yeah (laughs) and hey i also need a a checkup uh do do, do you offer (laughs) physicals I pay. I charge extra for that. <laughs> <laughs> Putting on the rubber gloves and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, good lord. Uh, <laughs> but she, they, they do, they do have uh, a, a pretty good romance in in this mm-hmm. film. They get this idea to like, hey, if you're gonna be turning into this velociraptor why not use those powers for good and take out people who are doing bad, who are evil. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, And so they start like exploring that space and what is that like? And in that process, in that montage of them doing all of that stuff, they, they do kind of have this connection. You, you see them like hanging out and spending time together and laughing (laughs) and, I love this montage that is every montage at once. 
it's right, both yeah. the getting to know each other date montage and the, the training, training montage, montage it, the it, preaching it, montage, the going to the gym montage, the, the, the being a velociraptor montage. The, the turning evil <laughs> montage, the 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 like, but maybe I should kill these people, right? Like <laughs> it's all of that into one. It's fantastic. Um but when uh when his mentor finds out he ends up wanting to lock doug jones up um mm -hmm. and uh that's that's what he 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 does they they or he he takes him to go see like a a a mystic is 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 that the right word uh it's his name's like alistair or altair or something yeah uh played and by voltaire okay uh Aure aurelio voltaire who uh is apparently a is professionally known yeah as aurelio voltaire or simply voltaire a a cuban american musician singer composer author animator is, known for his is, gothic style of dress and music is this the guy who did those songs for billy and mandy oh uh yes yeah I see that here. He <laughs> also created the, the songs for Cartoon Network animated series, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Amazing. Man, I did I, not know I that. I listen to those every Halloween. Interesting. Yeah, he's he's uh <laughs> he's they, they they according to his Wikipedia here, Voltaire is considered a leading figure in the dark cabaret music Ooh. genre. Uh, Gotta he has have it. Thirteen studio albums. So, oh my, what what a tough challenge! Out. What a tough challenge for a goth. Once you've reached thirteen, do you stop? Yeah, right? Have you reached your pinnacle? Do you keep going? And you're like, dang, I'll, nobody will ever say I have only a spooky thirteen number of albums. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> or or do you continue on and just? never admit that you made your 13th one right I, I, like it's this, <laughs> this the, is 13 like, the, i saved the, it the, the superstitious like oh the, like floor 13 doesn't exist we go straight from 12 to 14 and just like that is his like secret hidden album that you have to like do some do some occult ritual to <laughs> download who knows if what. you shoot past 13 you have to go all the way to 666 i'm sorry this is only right. how it works yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um my favorite bit in the entire movie is when father stewart flashes back to the vietnam war and father yes. stewart must be like the director's dad or somebody some and familial thing yeah when you flash back to him it's the same like man in his 50s but they've put him in a wig and like a helmet that's too small because it has to go over a wig yeah. <laughs> and he's talking to this guy who's supposed to be his war buddy. The funniest running bit in this movie to me is young men calling older men son. <laughs> now look here, son. <laughs> <laughs> Father Stewart is saying, you know, before he went and became a priest, like he is this girl waiting for him at home. He really wants to settle down, get married, start a family. And his war butter, his, his war buddy, nice. Ali, is <laughs> back in Nam. We had nothing to eat but war butter. <laughs> his, his buddy is saying, when you go home, start that family. I bet you could have five kids. And then he takes a second, like puts his chin in his hand, reconsiders and says, 11 kids. <laughs> five five is already a lot of kids and then he jumps over he more than doubles 11, it he skips, yeah. he skips all these numbers and goes to 11 kids and then he says and i want you to spend 15 minutes a day with each of them you have to schedule time you have to make an appointment it's, it's so set an alarm it's up so little timmy sorry time's up it's time it's for Sally time. samantha now yeah <laughs> I it's so many numbers this I rewound this several times <laughs> nothing is funnier to me than the sudden jump from five kids to 11 kids <laughs> I love this war section I want 
it's great. This yeah. Direct. I want this team to go on and make an entire war movie. The idea oh, of a awesome. war movie that's just a men who are all the wrong age wearing wigs and like ill-fitting costumes clearly in somebody's park is great. <laughs> Brendan, we have an idea. We've we've come up with this idea on another one of our podcasts. You 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 take the the trope of the old yes. grizzled detective and the young hotshot detective, but you reverse them. The young one is is the jaded detective. He he's a drinker. He's a smoker. All that <laughs> stuff. And then you got the the, the senior detective who is the hotshot, real chipper, just ready to right. go on the case. He, he knows how to <laughs> do say, it. The young one is saying, "I'm too old for this. When do I retire?" And somebody's like. You're still on your parents' health insurance. Right. That's and he's also he the is. one. He's also the one. Son, we need to slow son. down here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's the Miles Morales. Hey, but it's hey, son, slow down son. here at my my when you get to be my age. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> 24 <laughs> yeah when you've been on the force as long as i have uh, 18 months <laughs> <laughs> wow 18 months that's so long i've only been here for two weeks <laughs> <laughs> although i did do 40 years of service in another force but i've only been here for two weeks you're right yeah <laughs> they transferred me from the records de 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 department it's gold. We have an idea. Hire us. We'll, we'll hire make something Hollywood. work. <laughs> Bring yeah. us to you. Exactly. Anyways, um, An another great bit continue, in this Vietnam please. flashback is like he pulls out the photo. He's like, "This is my sweetheart Adeline. I can't wait to go home to her." And they're just hanging around, being soldiers. Yeah. And then Adeline starts running at him from <laughs> She's nowhere. Just randomly there in Vietnam. <laughs> Vietnam, which is the same park that they use for China and for Philadelphia. Same park. She's just running to him out of nowhere. Again, he doesn't run towards her. He stands where he is, just like Doug at the beginning Come of the movie. Me. Yeah. And it's like, Adeline, Adeline. And she's like, Stuart, Stuart. And then there's this tr wonderful edit where she like apparently steps on a mine and just just like they cut it. And cropped out the part of the frame where they're shooting blood and throwing a fake arm at Stuart. Yeah, he just gets covered in all of her blood and, <laughs> yeah. and guts and is just in shock and, and just stays like that. And one of the other war buddies is like, it's too late for her now. We can't help her. <laughs> <laughs> it just just great comedic timing with that. <laughs> Like, like I, I like that is a scene. I expect them to say some kind of funny line right there. And sometimes when you can in anticipate a joke, it's not as funny. I was like, it, it, it is both a mix of like the straight lace face that mm. of, of which he says it with also what he says, but just the the right amount of awkward pause in there of like i know a joke's coming when is yes this oh there it is right and they nail it and it's still so funny of of just like, can't do anything for her now it's too late <laughs> <laughs> there's the the one thing in this movie i kind of struggled with is that there were some sections like this that are so gag heavy and other ones that are more sincere like they're more straightforward but just sort of generally campy like there's the concept is still there priest turns in a velociraptor most of the time he just has a, a rubber glove on right yeah <laughs> like they're not specifically making any jokes for a stretch of the movie and they had made so many jokes in other parts that i was too prepared for that i'm like where are the gags uh, like i, I think i just wanted this movie to be like airplane or top secret or something mm, yeah in interesting yeah it yeah i i noticed that too i i don't think i minded it, it all that 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 much but you're right it is also something i noticed of like okay there's a long stretch here kind of 
almost midway to two thirds of the movie through where they're they're taking it a little bit more seriously to get some plot out of the way um, or, or to kind of progress it en- enough to where they can do the, the big finale fight scene against the ninjas. Um, I liked all of that, 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 that stuff, but it does feel maybe slower because of the Mm. rate at which those jokes were coming and then it slows down a bit there's this kind of dip in them um i I, I don't know if kind of spreading that out and making it a little more even is the right choice though because i i I do think having like there you you do need to have a break in between jokes every now and then um, cause I, I even think back to like take away TDs, like Thor Ragnarok and stuff like that, where it's joke after joke, after joke, after joke. And it almost kind of over like it, it, it's overbearing to the more mm. emotional parts of the film where it's like, I feel like I should be sitting with this emotion a little bit longer, but you're already making a fart j- joke, uh, Right. So I, I kind of appreciate that there like there is this like little dip in like, OK, I can sit with this a, 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 a little bit here. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I, but. I do want to praise the movie for its more sincere segments. Like I said, I think. There is they really interesting technique at really some good. point. Yeah, I love the use of split screen, like kind of throwback yeah. 70s split screen in this and the scene where Doug and Carol are going to have sex. First, you get the gag of when they're taking off all their clothes. Doug also <laughs> removes the bandages from his wound. <laughs> yeah. But the the colors in that where they're being bathed in these like red blue green fuchsia like really intense lights and there's all these really quick cuts and part of it is silly like it's flashing back to not just earlier in their relationship but literally the entire movie (laughs) and fast forward up until that point Mm -hmm. but when they right get right down to the business it's like the two of them bathe in these lights and it starts cutting between the two of them so fast that like their faces blur together that seems pretty neat i really yeah. liked it on its own uh outside of any jokes yeah uh that scene in particular kind of reminded me uh of the of Dario argento's suspiria with the, like yeah. those those colors i forget when that movie was made was that in the 60s oh 70s? it's like the 70s it's like 77 or so, which is um, kind of the style of, of filmmaking that they're doing here. Like you mentioned with the, the split screen and these these just like b- bright, super saturated colors uh, in 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 this light. It kind of reminded me of of a, a similar visual language to that. Mm-hmm. Movie. So. Uh, looking at the. YouTube description for the original Velocipaster trailer that Brandon Steer uploaded. Some mm-hmm. of the music in this trailer is from Goblin's soundtrack to Suspiria. Oh, interesting. There you go. Hit it on the head. Hole in one. Oh, nailed this, it. I also nailed it on the head. Suspiria did come out in 1977. <laughs> exactly. Hell yeah. Good stuff. Also free on Tubi. Double feature. Suspiria and the Velocipaster. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, yeah, I I because I I re- I really do like the relationship between Carol and Doug uh, here in in the, in this sh- show. And I like how by the end of this film, she's kind of ride or die for 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 him. Like they have this partnership uh that i think is gonna prove beneficial in some interesting ways i don't know what they have planned exactly for the sequel i think there is a synopsis out that we'll mention at the end of the show but um not not sure exactly what they have planned will she be done with med school with law school will is she Mm. on the road with the do they get married do they have kids do they have i love uh, i love little babies 
Yes, partially Velociraptor children. Right, yeah. Just um, little kids in face paint. Right. The, the, the sequel is actually a, a, a spoof of Air Bud, but it's just the Air bu- 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 Buddies uh, stuff where there's a, whole, a, lot, a lot of them. Ain't no rules Good saying Lord. a Velociraptor can't play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but they like I I I like the, that I like how it, in in the finale in the big fight scene where we do start to learn we we have to go back and t- talk more in depth about this finale. But I like how she is the, 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 yeah the, the, no the, qualms the, the, no discussion. She's like where him, you go fighting. I go yeah I'll she's put on ninjas. my <laughs> I will I will put on my black power jumpsuit and try and do some karate over here yeah which to me really reads like late 80s early 90s movies about like urban ninjas like like from (laughs) from like from teenage mutant ninja turtles to the three ninjas and stuff like that Mm -hmm. like here's this like everyday person now fighting ninjas what what is going on (laughs) um she holds her own yeah she does hold her own indeed uh but yeah let's let's talk a little bit about this finale and this like not conspiracy but this this thing that's happening that they (laughs) kind of stumble on to here let's talk about the villain's plan first yes please specifically the villain's henchman the villain is this uh it kind of tropey, like Chinese kung fu master guy. But I think I was reading like that actor got really into the role. He's like, "This is fun. I'm gonna bring my own costume. I like this." Oh yeah, and he yeah. has this one hinge. I love that whenever you go to his compound, which is just that same park it's again, he has g- 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 guys. I know. <laughs> just permanent, <laughs> permanently, there is one guy standing next to a flag and two guys just doing punches. And every punch has a sa- like a whoosh sound effect to it. <laughs> the, f- <laughs> the sound team on this movie really working overtime in post-production. Oh, and this one henchman who's just this like dorky blonde guy who's very intense. And there's a scene where they're talking about their evil plan and the, the like Kung Fu master does a maniacal laugh and the henchman laughs, too. And the master keeps laughing. So the henchman has to also keep laughing, at doing every <laughs> different kind of laugh you can imagine. It's, it's like a game of chicken. But who will stop <laughs> laughing first? It's like, no, I'm more evil than you. I, therefore, I laugh longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah it, it it that also kind of reminds me of those like urban ninja movies um just that you have this like dorky evil white guy uh who just <laughs> happens to be there you have no idea like why how did you get involved with this organization what is going on did they have like a great dental plan or something what like what's <laughs> happening here um but yeah, uh, they are manufacturing drugs and they are planning to get a bunch of people hooked. And when they find out about the Velasa pastor um, or the, yeah, they, they want to like co-opt him as a pastor to to be like, hey, you can take out our competition for the drugs space. We're, therefore, we will be the drug lords. We'll get everyone addicted. And because they're addicted, they'll need Jesus. And they can come to your church where they'll give you money. I, and like all and it just like I hey, love that it's a great plan, I, right? <laughs> like drugs is not the final plan. Religion is the final plan. It's a religious crusade. They're like, we'll get everyone, everyone in the city hooked on cocaine. Then we'll take away the cocaine. Everyone will need to go to a support group for Addicts Anonymous. The support groups will be at the church. Yeah. Their new drug is Jesus. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just, it's just it, like, honestly, it's another way one of those like, it's so dumb. It works like uh, schemes like I can see how that cycle 
works then like every so often like okay new influx of drugs and then we take them away and then they all go to church and then new influx of judge of drugs and then take them away and they all go to ch- church and yeah they they start tithing they start paying for help and support and all that stuff and that that's that's how they make their evil empire right <laughs> um but uh yeah then by by when when Doug and Carol go to confront uh this group and they figure out what their plan is um they're they're almost going to just kind of leave when this d- nerdy white guy I forget if he says his name in is it this Sam it might be Sam. Where did I have the? Oh, let me see. Um, Velasa Pastor Wikipedia. Let me see if there's. His I'm pretty sure his name is name. Sam because I like vi- am acquainted yes. with a guy named Sam Jones, and I thought it was funny. There's another Sam Jones in this movie. Uh, Jesse Turtis as Sam the White Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Turrets, I I believe is his name uh yeah outstanding performance thank you jesse incredible yeah uh and (laughs) he just immediately goes into the trope of like no i'm your brother and he's like what no (laughs) i and then earlier in the movie doug had been flashing back to good times with his parents one of which is the three of them sitting around the dinner table such a great laughing great just laughing and laughing and laughing at nothing while there's voiceover saying son we're really proud of you and sitting there on the table is a plate that just has four slices of it eight slices of white bread on it just eight I that. slices just eight slices of white sandwich bread it's <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was really funny and then later when you see that scene again and it pans over from the three of them laughing at the table to just sam standing despondently in the kitchen i'm yeah. like that's why there were eight slices of bread they're gonna each have one sandwich <laughs> He he's just like he's not sitting at the table with the rest of them. He must have like gone up just to get a glass of water. But now he missed out on this joke that the whole family is laughing at. Maybe they were laughing at him. Who who knows? But it's still like they're having fun without me. My family doesn't want me. I must become a ninja. <laughs> right. And there's the scene where Doug is in the car with his parents and his dad's giving him this sort of Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben. Yeah, pep it's talk. absolutely that. And they're they're like dropping him off for priest school. It's very funny that they don't say seminary. They just say priest school. And then you cut to that scene again and there's like an extra backseat in the car and like Sam rises up like I never get that kind of support. (laughs) Yeah, it's so good. He's his long lost brother. There's a big fight. Not even long lost. He was there the whole time and just Doug just never thought about him. Right. Long ignored. (laughs) Um, and and yeah, they have this big like ninja fight at the end here, and uh, it's not until Carol uh gets I, I, I guess like stabbed or hit with a ninja star or an a- arrow or I, I forget what but she gets hurt, um, and that uh that causes Doug to go into a fit of rage and turn into a d- 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 dinosaur. Uh, which is a, just like one of those big inflatable Halloween costumes. Yes, absolutely. Well, it like it's it it is not the inflatable Halloween costume, but looks akin to it. Like yes, there is some yes. they did make a suit. And if you yeah. look in in the original like short film of of the Velocipastor, uh, it is just this wonderfully terribly constructed dinosaurs suit whose i whose name i think is mona they they credit her as oh. like mona the da, 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 dinosaur or something <laughs> um so it's great to know that uh the d- 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 dinosaur suit has a name um but 
Yeah, like he he transforms into this thing. And it, yeah, it is just like the cheesiest Velociraptor Tyrannosaurus Rex looking costume. Uh, and just goes on a rampage, killing ninjas, eating ninjas. It is ridiculous. It's hilarious. Um, and it's just, yeah. It, the, have you ever seen you know that the, the song by the presidents of the United States of America, Peaches? Uh, yeah. millions of peaches peaches yes. for free um have you have, have you seen that music video no <laughs> absolutely go watch the okay. music vi- video of this this is exactly what i'm talking about by like late 80s early 90s random ninjas just this is the idea they have a standard like music video like out in the woods and then halfway in the song ninjas attack and that's it that's the idea for the music video and they have to fight off ninjas um and it like it just it reminds me of of this just like cheesy ninja fight scene like what is happening here um but they they end up uh, dis- destroying all these ninjas, eating them, killing them, uh, and uh, they uh, eventually get uh, Carol to some some help. She 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 makes it. She's a lot live. What happens is that Doug is brought into the room where they're holding her at the hospital and she's like up on it. it I thought the reveal was going to be that she was pregnant. Cause I'm like, yes, that the, is absolutely a gynecological exam chair that she's in. Yeah. But the fact that they don't tell you that makes it even funnier. Like, why <laughs> is she there? <laughs> but she goes in and Doug says, so you're fine. And she beckons him close and whispers in his ear. I'm fine. And then this <laughs> giant text appears on the screen that says she's fine. <laughs> Which I mean, it 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 might be her actually figure it like finding out that she's pregnant and it's them being worried about like like that. Yeah, but half velociraptor babies like is that going to cause some problem? But they don't give you that context. And so it is this mix of like, is she recovering from her injuries from the ninja fight that she just had? Or how far along is this that they're they're worried about the like little velocity babies? Um, like the fact that this should play exactly like a scene where she tells him that she's pregnant, but that never happens makes it fair. I love yeah. that joke. I love the juxtaposition of this thing that you expect to be there that is completely missing. And it's 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 the re- reverse of the the China joke where it comes up on screen and it's like china and then he you know he goes ah china (laughs) right (laughs) cut uh it's 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 i'm fine she's fine (laughs) right right there on screen yeah so good um yeah it, it but then they have this like I don't know, like 50s style, like greaser almost like he is the cool <laughs> hot shot of the gang. Uh, like, well, now I have to go take this mission around the world. Right. And like, but I'll have my baby right by my side. Right. <laughs> uh, and yeah, they they want to go to like they 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 think of of like, well, now that you're a priest that has these velociraptor powers, the diocese will have something to say about this. I wonder what the Vatican will think, right? Like all of the that's not like <laughs> we have to go to Europe. We have to go to Italy. We have to go here. We have to go there. Around the so, world. Yeah. Uh, and and so, like that's kind of where the movie ends. They start making out. They live happily ever after. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, it's just it's it's like I I like that scene too that it hit like it is them at the end just in this like ride or die position with this like grand calling even though they're not actually being called anywhere <laughs> like yeah they just think they we, have we've this decided this mission yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah I, I i like that scene a lot because it is it is the like 
we could make a sequel of this eventually, maybe, who knows? We're keeping it open ended, but also not really giving you anything of what the sequel will actually be. Um, and it wraps everything up that they like. They just get to be on their own and, and start a family. Little youth velocipasters. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. Um, so, yeah, I, I had a blast with this. I love this movie I, a lot. As we wrap up, there's one final thing I have to mention that we didn't touch on, which is when Frankie Mermaids goes to Doug for confession. Oh, the confession, and yeah. he's yes. <laughs> And he's listing his crimes. And he's like, well, first off, I stole candy from a baby. Then I had to throw the kid in the river so he wouldn't squeal. <laughs> he's so good. And then he finds out that amongst his crimes was uh, the car explosion that killed his <laughs> oh, yeah. parents. And then we and get, which was like the he works for that uh, guy in China and we never find out why that guy wanted the parents dead. Uh, yeah, to 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 uh, to send him on his walkabout in China uh, mm -hmm. to find God where he would find the artifact like everything is sick, sick, circular, cyclical. There you go. It's a big Ouroboros snake eating its own tail. Um, but but no, when, when we find out that he's the one that set the car bomb, we get a flashback again to that that scene. Mm -hmm. And it's very similar to the long ignored brother where Frankie Mermaid was just off camera, like hiding behind a tree or like a, 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 a two hour parking sign. Just being there with his most evil laugh, like. <laughs> um, and it's it's so dumb. And they like juxtapose his face on Doug J -J 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 Jones being like, no, mom, oh, I'm dead. I'm I'm on the Wikipedia page for this movie, and one of the production notes is uh, filmed on a budget of thirty six thousand dollars. Steer was influenced by director Guillermo del Toro, yep. presumably by his lower budget earlier films like Kronos. But maybe the Doug Jones is named after Doug Jones. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, potentially, could be, could be. I, um, I want to read what Wikipedia has to say about the sequel. Yes, please. Brendan Steer has stated that he wants to do a sequel as he believes the world of Velocipaster is so permissible and fun. In March 2020, Steer shared a sneak peek of the script on Twitter, making the announcement that the script was completed and set to start filming at some point. Production on The Velocipaster 2 wrapped up on October 4th, 2023. This is one year after the completed Kickstarter where the team raised $118,000. Yeah, there is no release date. A big change from the first film is that this one is being directed by Jesse Goldsbury, the cinematographer and producer on the previous film. The screenplay is written by Brendan Steer and Goldsbury with Steer editing the film. Alyssa Kapinski, Carol in the films, has also joined the production side as a producer this time mm -hmm. around. Indeed. See also list of films featuring dinosaurs. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, man, I I am. I I absolutely had a blast with this film. I cannot recommend it enough. Let me see, because there was I did find a little article. Um, oh, let me pull up the Kickstarter. I found that, too. I did find. Um, where was it? Comicbook.com has an article about them wrapping production of Velocipaster 2. Um, no, can continue without disabling. I want my ad bl blocker. Uh, let's see. It says, uh, is a sequel to blah, blah, blah. Uh, reprising their roles as Father Doug Jones and Carol, a hooker slash doctor slash lawyer, uh, comicbook.com paid a visit to the set of Velocipaster 2, uh, and we'll have some interviews and photos to share once the film's release inches closer. Um, let's see, do they, I think they had a, 
Doom, 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 doom. Uh, it says inspired by the Italian giallo films, folk horror and 1980s Cold War movies. The sequel to Velocipaster is explicitly set in the 1980s as opposed huh. to the first movie, which took place in the 1970s, but did not include any in-story events or references yeah. that would have made that clear, leaving the audience <laughs> to, to wonder whether it was a period piece or just a movie made to look timeless. I guess the only thing would be the nom references and mm. uh, stuff like that. Like that would have been in the 60s. And so 10 years after that, I guess you could see uh, I forget the other priests name father stewart father stewart yes thank you it says here's the synopsis for velocipastor 2 doug and carol travel to the port city of milan where they have to solve a series of murders committed by a masked slasher at an italian fertility festival period and soviet spies period <laughs> interpol is there too period <laughs> That's it. That's the, that's the synopsis. <laughs> um, it says original Velocipastor writer director Brendan Steele will return as writer and producer tapping, as you said, all of this stuff. Uh, most of the original movie, most of the crew from the original movie returned, including Emmy winning makeup and prosthetics artist Jennifer Suarez fresh off some work on the walking dead dead city Ooh. which is i believe the one that is focusing on negan and maggie i think um or wait no is dead is dead city the one that was focusing on rick i don't know there's so many spinoffs nowadays of the walking dead but uh yeah they are going to milan to solve some murders at an italian fertility f- festival uh, there will be Soviet spies and Interpol. Good mix. Great. Yeah, this sounds awesome. Um, so good on them. I'm glad that this has been such a hit uh, and has like already reached like a modern cult classic hit hit, hit status um, and that they are making a sequel and have a like more than tripled almost quadrupled their budget yeah uh, on this next one uh my my only hope is that it does not go into like well now we can do bigger production value per per person and like it it loses its like sense of comedy in the way the like Mm -hmm. the effects car on fire right that is some of the most charming bits of mm. this movie um to be honest I, I i i i hope this goes into paying the the actors and the crew uh that much more, more yeah. and and stuff like that because they all did some I, phenomenal yeah, work i do i do not want to see a hundred and eighteen thousand dollars <laughs> yes. on the screen <laughs> unless it is it has to do with them like we'll pay you 118k to, <laughs> to, to, like, that's the only time i want to see it. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly um so yeah good stuff with all of that bravo to brendan steer and crew uh who mm-hmm. made this the cast it's all incredible uh Good fun times. If you haven't watched this yet, go check it out. Please do. do. It's free. It's, go it's, watch it's it. very ex- it's very accessible. Put it mm-hmm. on for your family this Thanksgiving season. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Um, cool. Uh, let's see. I don't think we really have a bingo update. We like to play uh, movie trope bingo on this. I think do the you- only... I have one that is arguable and it's sex scene set to music. Um, I'd give you that one. Yeah. They, yeah. They do have they do have a montage. It is a sex scene. It is set to music. But they also don't like they don't really get into it's like, oh, this is a sex scene on 
film. They're just kind of making out. Oh, okay. It is, it is relatively chaste. So if you, if we don't see anything. So if you want to save I, that for later. Okay. I, 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 you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take it just because we It doesn't had, give you any bingos anyway. Yeah, it really d- d- does not. Let me see here if I can, uh, do five. Where's the good Lord. Um, do this. Let me at least bring this up on screen so everyone can see what we are talking about here. So here's our bingo cards. Uh, and Melissa, you only have two squares left to completely fill yours out. I have a handful of mine, but I am going to mark um, sex scene set to music. I, I, I find this one accessible, not accessible, acceptable. Uh, but mm. but also since since we've kind of been at a, a slower pace with marking these off you only have a handful of episodes left until the end of the year here so i might as well i'll i'll yeah that's fine this is acceptable this was an acceptable sex scene (laughs) good stuff okay that is our bingo update uh for this week here melissa let's talk recommendations if 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 people enjoy this, what else might they like? I mentioned it earlier. Top Secret. Airplane's good, too. But Top Secret is my favorite of that series of very gag heavy spoof films. Mm-hmm. I also mentioned Birdemic. Go into the realm of when I say bad movies, I don't mean bad as a qualifier. I mean, bad as like a genre. Watch sure, The yeah. Room, watch Birdemic, watch Troll 2. You're going to have a great time. Miami Connection is one of the big ones I haven't seen yet, but I have seen this movie compared to Miami Connection. I recommend okay, okay. the TV show Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, mm, which I pitched yep. to you this Halloween season. We didn't pick it. I'm going to have to get it on here next year. This is like a six episode, like limited BBC series from the mid 2000s. That's in the format of Garth Murray. He's this like Stephen King esque like horror writer. And he comes out and presents a show to you that he also stars in where he works at Dark Place Hospital, a hospital that's like haunted and on a burial ground and on a vortex and all of this stuff. So it's like an 80s soap opera hospital drama but also like there's a wild supernatural occurrence every week and so you watch the show and then you also watch talking head interviews with garth marenghi and like the cast and crew who are in the show within the show sure yeah. and it is purposefully like cheap flimsy b-movie stuff it's so hokey it's hysterical I, this is some of the stuff I've laughed at the hardest of my whole life. Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. Absolutely. And of course, I can't talk about a bad movie without mentioning my <laughs> beloved Mystery Science Theater 3000. Also very accessible. There's so You can find them streaming. You can go to a Netflix. You can also find a lot of episodes like ripped from old VHS tapes uploaded to YouTube. Mm-hmm. Because in the pre-streaming and proliferation of like DVDs days that they wanted you to circulate the tapes. They're like, just get the word out there. Share MST three K with anyone, you know, you can find some on YouTube of particular interest might be the episode track of the moon beast, which is about an archeologist who finds some sort of an artifact that is transforming him into a dinosaur lizard type creature at night. Interesting. Okay. There you go. Good mm-hmm. stuff. Good stuff. Um, Man, so my my partner is really into these yes. like B movie, uh, just like terribly cheesy, real flimsy budget, uh, if not like college projects that somehow got a distribution deal on Amazon for streaming mm-hmm. somehow. Um, it, it, Amazon has a number of them on Prime that you can watch for f- 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 free uh, Peacock also has a very good selection of these like cheesy mm. B movie um, things that you can watch. Um, two that I I thought were actually really really 
good on like the same level as Velocipaster here uh, was the Inhuman Witch. Uh, in <laughs> <laughs> the Inhuman Witch, um, <laughs> so, which is a like sci fi. They get infected by this like alien disease uh, thing. And then the just turns into like this giant blob of man, which uh, oh it, 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 it just starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, and that one was like hilarious. It was genuinely good. I loved it a lot. Um, another one of my favorites that just absolutely stellar uh was i was a teenage were skunk um <laughs> yeah that one also incredible it has like a good like 50s style it has like a diner scene in it um i i think they even almost have a musical number in in that one to do it's 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 so good i loved it a lot um but also just as cheesy just as flimsy like bad effects and everything um but those will absolutely be a, a great time um some uh, other ones i've seen oh yes i'm gonna grab i'm gonna grab something i forgot there's one more movie i want to recommend so we'll be back in a minute keep talking Go for it i will continue yeah um some more that I can recommend uh, would be like Lamageddon, Attack of the Killer Donuts. Uh, that one was another good one. Um, let's see. Uh, what else? Uh, more re 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 recently, if you want like maybe a bigger budget, better production value, um, there was the the Sloth, uh, Slother ha House uh, <laughs> movie. Um there's stuff like that. We saw a trailer for lava lanchulas. There, there, there was a volcano that starts spitting out these lava breathing giant spiders. Um, stuff like that. One of my personal favorites, uh, purely for nostalgia. I haven't watched it in like two decades. Uh, is the is the lost skeleton of Cadavra. Uh, this is a movie that we found in like the dollar bin at Costco when I was in maybe middle school at the most. And yeah, it, it is like cheesy sci fi meant to look like those like old 1930s sci fi movies like them or uh, like plan nine from outer space. Right. Like all of the, that, 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 that stuff. Uh, and it's just dumb, cheesy of effects uh so if you're into all of the, the, that stuff go check out those melissa you had one more yes. that you wanted to recommend. this is i i own this on physical dvd this was one of the final things i ever bought from a blockbuster i got this from a closing blockbuster in like 2010 2011 Perfect. this is a movie by asylum home entertainment who makes those mockbusters Mm. Where when a big movie comes out, they change a word in the title. Atlantic Rim, etc. Yeah. So at the time when Guy Ritchie's Sherlock Holmes came out, they put out this movie that's just called because it's in the public domain. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes. So they took Sherlock Holmes and kind of put him in the dinosaur vibes of the lost world. So you uh -huh. look at this cover. And it looks normal. There's like Sherlock and, and yeah. Watson and Moriarty, I guess. And like they're, Big they're, Ben. They almost look like the um, the Mount Rushmore statues. And they're they just, have it's yeah, just Big Ben It's there. just floating heads. Yeah. It's classic text. The O in Holmes is a magnifying glass. There's some floating heads. There's Big Ben. It looks normal. And then uh, popping out of the Thames River is a big T-Rex. There's uh, <laughs> tentacles. There's a, <laughs> a pterodactyl who's breathing fire. Amazing. So the, the plot of this movie, there's a quote on the back that is not attributed. It's just a phrase in quotation marks <laughs> that says an explosive creature filled mystery adventure in the vein of Harry Potter and Hellboy. End qu quote. <laughs> End quote. From whom? I don't know. So this is a standard Sherlock story, except 
you find out that he is a lost half brother named Thorpe who okay. lives in like a mechanical suit and he is like a robot maid and he's going to get in a hot air balloon and attack parliament and he's brought all these dinosaurs to attack London and set it on fire. Great. Like one does, you know? <laughs> I I remember very little of it. It's unfortunately kind of dull. Like the premise is wild, but I don't remember any specific like great laugh points mm. except for one where a a CGI velociraptor just like leaps out from behind a tree. Just like it <laughs> starts several feet off the ground when you see it exit from behind the tree and just like pounces yeah. into some generic park that they're filming in. An- great. Another great generic park movie. I don't know where you can find this. Like I said, I bought a DVD from a closed blockbuster like 12 years ago. But yeah. and I with a title this generic, I don't know how you could Google it. But if you want to see Sherlock Holmes fight a dinosaur, this movie is here for that specific need. OK, good stuff. Good stuff. Those are our recommendations for this week. Melissa, it is your turn to do some pitches for this next week. Uh, well, next week, it will be the final Sunday of the month. That's and that right. means yes. we are going to continue our ongoing monthly series. We'll be reading the last three volumes of the original Mike Mignola Hellboy comics. Mm-hmm. We've been reading three of those a month for the last couple months. So this month, we're going to read uh, 10, 11 and 12. And then we'll Correct. be done. Yeah. But I have pitches for the week after that. Perfect. In honor of the upcoming Christmas holidays, I am offering you a choice between a red movie or a green movie. Oh, man. Um, red or green, red or green. Uh, the show, the 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 theming of the Whatnots review show has always been red. We, we have like a red bat go, go, go around on our YouTube. So I'm going to go the opposite with green. Oh, OK. You know that beloved holiday classic where Jim Carrey is painted green and he's some sort of local weirdo. Mm-hmm. We're not watching that one that you would watch at Christmas time. We're watching The Mask. <laughs> the mask okay <laughs> there we go so wow. i i'll i'll tell the, i'll tell you what my pl- idea was besides just the binary christmas theme red and green okay i had two movies that each were our my gift to you gonna cross something off of our bingo sheets because our bingo sheets have been pretty dry mm. lately if you had picked red we would have watched the 1948 musical the red shoes Which would have gotten Uh, us arted to death and it would have continued our woman artist in peril series in the vein of Suspiria, Perfect Blue, Suspiria, uh, Black Swan and Persona. Yeah. And instead, you've chosen green. We're going to watch Jim Carrey's The Mask, a movie in which he gets splashed by a big puddle. Yeah. Hell yeah. Good stuff. Good thinking. Good idea. Um, well, yeah, that is what we will end up doing for the first week in December. Uh, so be on the lookout for all of that good stuff. And like we said, oh, next week it's... here on the sh- show, Hellboy. Yeah. He is uh, red. I'll just mention. The mask is green, right? Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> right. We've spent a lot of this year talking about red guy. Now it's time for green guy. We need uh, the we mask. Need... Go ahead. I just want to mention that you can also watch this movie for free on Tubi Perfect. or on Max. There you go. I was going to say we 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 need some kind of like League of Extraordinary j- 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 Gentlemen, but themed around a holiday in, instead where it's like we got Hellboy and the Mask or the Grinch and right. And they're all teaming up to save c- Christmas. <laughs> the red and green. Oh, well. Maybe I'm not as <laughs> funny as I think. Uh, OK, that is it for our podcast this week. We hope you enjoyed it. I know we had a blast 
Uh, and yeah, we will see you all next week. So, Melissa, where can the people find you on the interwebs? You can find me on Twitter. No, well, you can still theoretically find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkieWit. I don't I haven't updated those in a long time. I just mentioned this out of muscle memory. Uh, but my account still exists. You can look at old stuff. You can send me a message. I will get the notification that you've sent me a message. Uh, but for right now, you can find me on Letterboxd, also under WilkyWit, W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. Perfect. Uh, you guys can find me at Yo Kyle Springer on most social media places. Uh, and if you would like to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do here at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots on most social medias. Uh, so please go like, share, and subscribe. You guys know the deal with all of that. If you're watching this on YouTube, go check out one of our other videos right over there on that side of the screen. That would help us out a bunch as well. And yeah, this has been number 280 of The Whatnots Review Show. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.